Yes then, good people, welcome to the video. Let me take you down this little rabbit hole I went down last night. Because I watched some brilliant stuff last night and I just want to share it with you people. I could not sleep for shit last night. But no big deal, I just accepted it and thought I'm going to watch some good shit. And I'm glad I couldn't sleep. Cause I've, it's been a while since I've had like videos like I've enjoyed this much. As you may know, I've got a bit of an affinity for spice. And like, I found out Americans recently call it K2. So here we go, first video, just watching some spice heads in a prison cell. I'll pause it and do some talking in a sec. Yeah, I just realised, mate, there's some real subtle music playing in the background. Yeah, I'm just going to have to cut in and out the audio, which has pissed me off. But I ain't having it. If I fucking sit and spend a lot of time on these videos, motherfuckers just to take it down just because it's got some little song playing in the background. I ain't having oh. it. Oh, shit, man. Look at this gears, man. Look. It's all right. It's the eyes, bro. You know what's going on? Look at that hand, though. See, when that hand get like that, that's when you know that's gas. Take a silly eye. My man, my man, like he still got a piece in his hand. It's all bad. But that shit ain't, look, yo, DJ. My man say the shit ain't nothing. Look at him. That shit ain't nothing. Fucking is Look, DJ. Kiss the locker. Kiss the locker. Kiss the locker. You can do it. Kiss the lock. You want another piece? Huh? The way he's always lied to it when he says, you want another piece? He's like, huh? <laughs> this geese is saying it ain't no thing, smoking spice, that he can handle it. And I believe him, bro. He looks warped out, but he wants some more, so fair play. Want another piece? Yeah. yeah. Huh? <laughs> Can you smoke a slab? If I give you a slab, you'll smoke a slab or you, you cool right now? Huh? Give me another one. Wrap it up for him. You can smoke a slab. Wrap it up for him. If you can slap. Wrap it up for him. Wrap it up for him. How you gonna give me some slap? Let me just break down what spice actually is. Like, sorry for keep pausing the video. I do a lot of pausing. I just I like to use my voice box, you know what I mean? But um Spice is man-made cannabinoids. It's just basically like a load of fucking leaf sprayed with chemicals that people smoke. In fact, it's not on leaf at the minute. To get it into prison, they're spraying paper and people are just like smoking the paper in a pipe or something like that. And that's what it does to them. So when he says square, I'm not sure if he means square of paper or like they're calling a square a cigarette. <laughs> you don't want to oh, he's going down. This geezer right here definitely does not want another square, whatever they are. But yeah, this is what I'm plagued with when I go into Lincoln City Centre, bro. There's bare people sleeping in doorways and shit. And the law ain't around. <laughs> <laughs> then, out of absolutely nowhere, my man just whips out the akimbo bananas. And this is what makes me like this geezer, because I'm pretty sure they're trying to rob him here or something. But he holds on to his own. He don't hand over them bananas. He wanted the square, but not if he's got to pay the bananas. Do you know what I mean? That's too much of a price. Let me get more bananas, man. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Let me buy him. Let me buy him. I'm, I'm giving you a piece for him. I'm giving you a piece for him. He wrapping you up right now. I don't know why. Come on, man. I just gave you a piece for both of them. Man, what a goddamn... Where his back? Okay, here you go. I just yeah. gave you a piece for both of them. Let me just say, I'd love to see that geezer sober because he looks like a funny motherfucker. But yeah, never in my life would I touch that dirty drug. Not even for a million pounds. If, if fucking Jeremy Clarkson offered me the milli without having to answer a question, I'd say no. You can hold me to that if anyone out there wants to test me, bro. But I will not touch that shit. I don't know how people fucking try it for the first time. Like, fair enough if you're in prison or sleeping on the streets, but fuck that. It's one chemical compound different from fence panel treatment. So after this, I discovered that K2 is not only the name for spice in America, but there's also a mountain called K2, which baffled me as I'd never heard from it. But as you can see in these comparative photos, 
K2 is a lot harsher than Everest. It's more of a triangular shape, whereas Everest has like slow winding pathways. It is actually a lot more dangerous than Everest though, as only 400 people have ever climbed it, whereas it's about 4,000 that have summited on Everest. And one in four people that attempt to summit K2 will perish, which is fucking nuts. It's like 25% chance. Like, I wouldn't bet on Japan if I knew, you know what I mean? Like, fucking, that's your life, that is. But this is what these people love to do. So after finding out some information about K2, I'm going to discover that there was actually five deaths earlier this month. Yeah, so on the 5th of Feb, 2021, five people in the picture there all lost their lives, unfortunately. The one that stood out to me the most was the guy in blue because he'd actually documented the whole trip up until the very end. He couldn't understand a lick of what he was saying. It was either like Hebrew or Spanish or something, but it was only a five-minute video, and I just thought... I already knew he'd died because of the title. I just thought I'd fucking watch it, you know what I mean? And it was pretty cool, man. It's eye-opening, isn't it? The risk that these people take. For the love of what they do, man. It's fucking admirable, to say the least. Not only that, but the logistical effort and the sheer cost of achieving... Achieving? Achieving something like this is crazy, man. They actually have to pay, like, these mountain people. They call them Sherpas. And they live in the hills all year round. And they just cart people's gear up. And, like, some of them was complaining that they'd got ripped off because they'd carried up all these massive bags and only got paid $2 per bag. I'd be fucking slinging them down the mountain, mate. I would if I was Sherpa. I mean, the bags, not the people, like. And uh, another thing why it's so hard to climb this mountain compared to Everest is the fact that it takes so long to get to the actual base of the mountain. So Everest has got, like, a Himalayan trail around it, I believe. It's in Nepal, isn't it? But it's like a stone gravel trail all the way up here. You actually have to drive down some little death road for six hours, then walk for seven days, I think, to get to the base of the mountain. As you see on his little headers, he starts this journey, I think, on like the 20th of December. And it ends, obviously, on the 5th when he dies. But it had probably been about the 10th when he got back down the mountain. So it's like a two-week, three-week thing. You can't just run up the mountain. You've got to acclimatise at each point. It's mad. And like, there's people that have achieved it with no oxygen, which is even ba- more baffling. Like You're going up it and you're fucking... You- Doing it pretty much like the geezers did it first in the 50s, man. Crazy. I'll link this other documentary down below of a geezer that actually made it up to the summit. And I think what a lot of it is, why this geezer died, is the fact that you see how windy it is now. They say that you don't want wind when you're going to summit. It's got to be a near enough perfect day. They actually had like this geezer on hand who had some fancy weather equipment that told them they'd got a four day window. Either they've got to go up and do it, or it ain't happening. 95% of the people that was on the mountain with them back down and went home. They, I think there was four people that made it on the day. And uh, here you see them in the tent doing some yoga. That guy sitting in the centre of the circle there, he actually died with Sergey. He's a Bulgarian dude. He's got a YouTube channel as well. I think he was a doctor. But look, also, you know what I mean? Cool guy, bro. The people that do this shit, that live full lives, man. You know, they died living it didn't they they didn't just fucking die smoking crack in a flat or overdosing on k2 the dog climbing k2 baby next clip i found just a short one minute one gears are falling Thankfully down i didn't keep falling that way 21 meters inside a himalayan crevasse alone one broken arm a dislocated shoulder and broken ribs oh. the prospects for professor john all were dire i got trapped here instead this ledge, my arm, I can't use. I'm going to have to somehow climb out that way. Using his uninjured legs, that's what he did. Armed with only a text capable phone and with the rest of his team asleep at a second base camp, John turned to a platform that he knew would gather global attention Facebook. His messages read, Please call Globe. It says, Armed with only a text capable phone, he managed to get onto Facebook makes sense rescue another i'll try to survive tonight bleeding inside feels better but so cold and longest night ever i couldn't move my right arm was in piercing agony my ribs were uh were hurting very badly it was difficult to breathe 
and uh, I knew I was going to die. I mean, there was just no way to get out of a crevasse like this. People who fall into crevasses don't live. John was part of a scientific team looking at the climate's effect on mountain areas. His team had moved to a second camp, leaving him in what he described as a safe zone. Yeah, clearly. I have looked over the edge into the abyss, and I know that's not where I wanted to be, and now I can really, really appreciate living and being with my friends and family. Fair play to John Boy, man. That's some cool shit. So after that, I'm led on to this geezer. So that right there is Brad Gobright in the blue on the left. Uh, he's famous for climbing. He does free solo like uh, Alex Hunnell, but he's not so down with social media and that, so I don't think he's quite as well known. No one's heard of you. I guess I'm just not, not badass enough. I don't know. Not badass enough? I'm like, uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, cheers. Yeah, you want some cheese? Yeah, let's yeah. make it classy. I'm gonna cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Oh, I only just got like the Instagram kind of deal gone. I never owned a smartphone okay. until about a year ago. So, yeah, I guess it's all about Instagram. How many followers do you have? How many followers do you oh, need God, to be Oh, God, I don't even know. Pro? Probably, I don't know. Above what I have. Oh, my God. Instagram. Yeah, it's so awful. Have you ever shaved your legs? So I do this thing. Where I go like this. Why? And it makes these like little like uh, balls. Like and I just tear them out. Yeah, like dredge and I tear them out. Why? Well, it's just like when I'm not doing anything. I don't know. It's like I'm just talking. Like when a... I'm like, say I was wearing shorts, I'm just right. talking. Like I just right be now. doing this. And then you know, you pull and then, it out. That's like a... You know, and then like you got little holes and you just kind of like pull them out. <laughs> this picture captures the moment right before he actually slips off a rock, falls, breaks his back and his ankle. So here we are. Yeah, he did actually fall on a rope to climb, but that little bit he was doing, he had to climb up like 20 feet before he could link into the uh, rope and he just slipped. But yeah, this geezer, man, he works normal jobs. He ain't got no mad sponsors or nothing. He ain't even got a shoe sponsor. He does it all out of his own pocket and for sheer love, man. You gotta respect that. Then sadly, I learned about what happened, man. He fell off a cliff, a thousand foot, fell to his death, bro. Oh, I just hope the same thing does not happen to Alex Honnold. He was just a fucking sound guy. Same with Alex Honnold, man. These people, they're not like adrenaline junkies. They're very calm, they're calculated, they know what they're doing. But fuck it, I would be good if Alex Honnold died, man. Also, I just looked it up. He died. He'd just done a f massive free solo and he was rappelling back down, man. And the rope gave way. Him and his mate both fell. His mate survived. He only fell like 20 feet. He plummeted the thousand man into like a free fall. Fucking horrible. And the last thing I was having a look at last night is this. I fucking, I've been hearing about him so much. Then I seen that the Paddy had done a video on him. So I was like, ah, oh, fucking no way. I'll have a little look, see what it's all about. So he's talking about him in a video. And he just appears in the fucking live stream and like says, yeah, I'll come on and have a little chat. So what I'm saying is he must have his ears to the ground. So I must have told him, look, bro, you're on this show, innit? But it's fucking hilarious, mate. There's nothing you can say on a geezer. Right? People are saying, oh, you got this much money on your head. It's just like, yeah, well, I live here. Me mum lives here. Come down then. And they never fucking did nothing. Only thing that I don't approve of is showing off all the cash and the tax man knowing about that because I think they're going to come down hard on him. But it's worth it because he has cemented himself as a UK legend, man. Yeah, I'm definitely rooting for this geezer, man. He's got no fear. I wouldn't normally approve of someone like ripping people off and that, but the way he described it is he was doing bad business, the person he was working with, so he scolded him, and that's fair enough. The only like cause for concern is, yeah, there's people out there that have been murdered for £100 debts, and this geezer's apparently got like, a couple hundred thousand pounds that he's just fucking up scolded right. with. Over Richard yeah, Mill. Yeah, a Richard Mill. What did they do I'm about it? What did they do about it? They done nothing. Nothing. That's yeah. what you're doing. Making phone calls. Nothing. Yeah, okay, okay. Right, nothing. mate. This nothing. is the last you're going to hear from me, all right? The last you're going to hear from uh, me. Hang on, you forgot. You forgot as well. You know, Dr. Adams is for seven boxes of work. What did they do? <clears throat> nothing. Who? Robbed the Adamses, robbed them for seven boxes of work, they done nothing. Robbed the Scarters for Richard Mill, 145 grand, they done nothing. Okay. Now for Benjamin Lyons, have you spoken to your brother? Because I, I had a nice phone call with your brother a minute ago. Did you ring your brother? Did I ring me brother? I've got all your addresses. I've got your addresses in Scotland, Ireland, and fucking Liverpool now. I've got all your addresses. Yeah. I've just rung your brother. Ring your brother. Ring your brother. He'll tell you. I just spoke to someone called Danny from London. So I think you need to ring your brother. So I've got all your addresses. 
and I'll tell you what Benjamin Lyons going to do for me robbing him for money five grand he's going to do nothing. nothing yeah so you the Adamses and the fucking Scassers you all team up you all try and pay a black kid ten thousand pounds or two hundred fifty grand on my head and you join the motherfucking queue that's behind you because you'll do nothing yeah Biv they told him he had seven days to live so he made this post saying it's been seven days <laughs> How can you have so much cheek on you, man? When it's such a large amount of money as well. And this geezer, I don't know, like, I don't approve of all the gangster talk and that, but he's not saying nothing like bad, man, is he? He's just calm and collective. He's just telling them how it is. And it's like he's telling them the truth. And, uh, like, you see how the police react with him and stuff like that. They're definitely fearful of him. I wish I could get that kind of fucking respect off the police. The fucking... <laughs> Women grab me up and think, hey, weedy little fucker, get in the car. <laughs> but now they fucking sit there petrified of him, shaking in their boots, mate. But, yeah, I do hope that he does not get caught out by the police or the gangland fucking heads and get his boots smoked, mate, because he's a fucking funny geezer. He should be in Guy Martin's next film, mate. Definitely. Get some of that authenticity in there, some of that real cockney fucking geezer shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's got an interview with that big ego media geezer, innit? So I'm going to go check that out after this. But yeah, I'm going to be banging out a good few videos in quick succession of each other. So be on the lookout for that. Hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you have a wonderful day. Royce Roller, the host with absolutely nothing. Because I'm a broke motherfucker. No, but fair play to Danny. I like him. And uh, fair play to Paddy for getting the scoop on that story. Because I feel like it's going to go a lot bigger than it has at the minute. Royce Roller, I'll see you in the next one. Like I said, video's coming soon. Bash.